Scanning. Ancestry Lands subscribers verified. You have been assigned this mission if you choose it. Your mission is to watch this video and create a plan. This is a global mission designed for each individual viewer to achieve what seems to be the impossible. The information given to you in this video will separate you from the vast majority stuck in the rat race with no long-term plan in mind. Your target is to become part of the elite, a group of individuals focused on achieving success in many areas in their lives. Success, although measured in many different ways, separates the real from the fake. In this video, Philip Davis will explain how to keep you on this mission, to keep yourself on track towards success. This path is wrought with danger full of people trying to take you down. Even worse, there's no end to the amount of haters you will have in your midst. Their goal is to leave you broke and just as poor as them, ensuring mutual destruction because they couldn't hack it. However, with this video and a host of others you watched on this channel, you can be successful and enjoy the fruits of your labors, leaving the haters behind. This mission to watch this video and learn the valuable tools from Philip Davis. This message will now self-destruct. Get ready. Our host has arrived. Hey folks, good morning. Phil Davis, Ancestry Lands, AncestryLands.com. We got a little rainy day today. As you can see, I'm driving and uh, fixing my camera here. Driving and it's rainy outside. It's lightning and thundering on my way to work. Wanted to ask you, what is your mission? What is your modus operandi in life? What are you looking to accomplish? The reason why I ask this question is that a lot of times when you have too many side missions, side goals, side uh, journeys that you take, you often can get lost in what is your true mission? What was your true designation in life? And a lot of times this can be complicated by additional responsibilities that you have tacked on, like you know, you have kids. You might have always wanted to be a millionaire, but then you got a family. So those dreams alter slightly in many ways. So I think we should go south. I'm gonna go south today, folks, not north. And the reason why I, one of the things I wanna ask about is that sometimes you find yourself in life unhappy because you've gone too far away from your central mission. And if you look at my last two videos I put out, they kind of hit on this. They kind of hit, hit on your happiness, not sacrificing your happiness for others. Right? Keeping yourself financially disciplined. So that way your true goals, what your designation, where you're headed in life stays the same, or at least you're heading in that same range. You're heading in that same area. You're going to land it somewhere in the same vicinity and if you don't have that you're gonna find yourself lost and a lot of people walk around here lost because again they never set their heading north for themselves you see that people with people with endless degrees you see that with people who have switched 9 10 12 jobs you see that with people now who they're waiting on the government to forgive the student loans in order to address the debt that's still there. You know, and now we find out that in five states, the student loans will be considered like taxable income, federal taxable income. So now what do you do? And it all aims at the fact that we are, we need to be taught to be responsible for our decisions and our actions in life. The more, the more that you're not taught to be responsible for the decisions that you make, the least you're going to consider the decisions. I'm going to try to say this the right way. When you make a decision, you're not going to consider the outcomes at all because you're not used to dealing with the outcomes. You can move to the next decision without addressing whether or not that this, the last decision that you made was right or wrong. When you deal with a decision and you have to pay for it, 
when you have to make that decision again or you have to advise others on a decision that they will make that will be similar you now have foreknowledge because you understand what you had to do to be accountable for that decision that you made now, I'm not trying to confuse you here but just think about it for a second let that process here you know part of the reason why discipline is so effective people always have a problem with discipline is that when a child does something wrong and it's discipline there it is immediate response or sensation that the child will understand that will give them knowledge for, for the next experience and I can explain this how when a child touches a hot oven back in the day when ovens used to be hot when you touch the door now that's not the case but if they touch something that is unpleasant, something sharp, something super cold, something super warm, that they do not find palatable or it's an adverse sensation, meaning that it is a negative reaction to them. Even if, let's just use another light example, something super sour. If a child it has that memory of every time I eat this thing, it's sour, and they had that reaction, that, ugh, you know, or that hot, that cry, that I got burned, not burned, but, you know, I, it, it was the, the oven doors used to singe kids' fingers, you know, I used to burn, and we used to tell them, hot, hot, you know, tell the kid, hot, hot, it's hot, baby, don't listen. Then you tell the kid, hey, you're going to get burned, don't do that, ah, ah. child does it anyway. Then the next thing you know, they get the little, they get the burn. Now the child has valid proof and information. The brain is now wired up to say, hey, don't do that again. The whole body will resist that and the child now has a memory. And typically, 99.9% .9 of the times, the child no longer needed the warning from the parent, the, the, the forewarning that, hey, don't touch. The child instinctively knew now to not touch that item. They knew to avoid it. They understood the dangers, even if they didn't understand the dangers to the fullest extent, they understood the basic need to avoid. And animals have that same base understanding, right? So with that, when you don't have the accountability or responsibility for the decisions that you make, you lose that same, that burn. That memory that, hey, that was not a good decision. This was wrong. This was not great. I suffered from this. There was some pain caused. You lose that. And when you lose that, you lose the fundamental thing that promotes learning. You, you have not, you're not going to learn. And when again, when everything can be just forgiven and you don't have to pay a tax on your decisions then you keep on moving from bad decision to bad decision to bad decision. And you never learn anything. There's no change in your behavior. And you see this all the time with children that are undisciplined. That have no discipline, have no leadership, have no structure in their lives. They move from bad decision to bad decision. And even if they are in a good situation, they still will end up naturally making bad decisions naturally because they've never been taught that they are responsible for the outcomes and the decision that they've made this is why jails exist so I ask you again when your mission is is, is strong when you have a, a destination when you have a a goal in mind, an end in sight, when you have something that you're working towards, and again, it's not your vision, it needs to be something that other people can see, they may not be able to see exactly what it is, but they definitely should have an idea or an awareness that you're going somewhere, you get that? A kid who's athletically gifted and talented at a young age People can perceive this child having a better possibility of becoming a professional athlete if they continue to see evidence of that child 
improving and growing and rising at a level above the other children. They can see the chances of that kid's going to be a good athlete someday. You see that all the time. Because again, they have verifiable evidence, tangible evidence that they can see that the child, it shows them data. It's much just like that pain. When you get burned by that oven, when you get singed by a fire, you are aware. You're so aware that you're actually biologically aware. Your body, your DNA is biologically aware that you are a natural fear of fire. That's your, that's your base primal instinct. And that's put in place to protect you. People might be wondering why I ran that, that red light, and that's only because if they're, it's raining out. It's very slippery. It's cleared up from the heavy storm. But when it first starts to rain, that's the one thing that anybody who's a new driver should know, or anybody who's driving should know, that trying to come to an abrupt stop like that during the first rain, now is the time where the ground is the most slipperiest. When it initially rains, the, the roads are their slipperiest. Because the, the asphalt, the road, has not had a chance to absorb a lot of that rain. So you can end up trying to aggressively stop and you have a short distance, you end up sliding. And I mean, obviously, it has to be other things that go into place with that. But my point in saying all of that is that when you do not have that mission, it's not clearly defined. Your goals tend to work you step by step by step towards it. People can see that vision much clearer. When you're zigzagging going what I call east-west and you're not going in a straight line or you're not going very linear to your goal, people can't see it. It becomes cloudy. Even you yourself will see you're not on task with your goal. You're further away from it. You're not in a place where you're moving forward towards that. And, and people, and here's the thing you got to be careful. You got to be careful not to start negotiating with yourself. What I call negotiating with yourself is where people start to make excuses saying, oh, you know, I can get it tomorrow. Oh, it's not that bad because of this. Again, it's the shirking of responsibility that happens there. So you're negotiating with yourself. The side of you that is determined trying to get to that outcome starts to now make deals with the more passive side of yourself. The side of yourself that's looking to tell you, don't do so much. Don't do the, don't do any more. You've done enough. You're good right now. Don't overwork yourself. You could always do it tomorrow. When you start seeing that, that's your natural side of you that is trying to slow you down. And we have those internally. They're not, it's not always just an external person. There are people who lack self-motivation. <clears throat> Determination is something that is an inner drive. It's an inner fire. But we know that fires have to be maintained. Fires have to be fed. Fires are not just going to just burn. They will burn themselves out if you do not give them fuel. So again, determination is nothing without fuel for that desire, fuel for that determination. One must continuously feed that fire in order for the fire to maintain its warmth or its that inner drive. It must be fed. Now, how do you do that? Well, I've got a few ideas. One, you gotta set new goals. You gotta make sure that every goal is not a goal that's 30 years, 40 years, 50 years in the making. You need to have goals that are a lot more short-term, achievable, that motivate you, or when you achieve them, they propel you to want to go to the next step. It's the same thing with this tree right here. If this tree had fruit, and you saw a good apple here on this part of the tree, and then you saw another juicier apple a step above it, once you got to the first apple, you're like, man, that's a good apple. This one looks better. Okay, and I got, I, then you climb up to that next apple. You got that apple. You taste it, man, that looks better. And now you start to see other apples that look just as delicious as that first, those first two apples on the lower level of the tree. So what do you do? Now you make up your mind to start climbing up to the next one. And now what you're doing is looking for new apples that look like the apples you're identifying as good fruit. 
when you're when you have achievable goals in the short term and midterm in five years you will see long-term outcomes start to happen well the problem is people set their you know they leave they, and this is a, a, a shipping analogy here and again I am going to use analogies and metaphors to get you to understand things because I want your mind a lot of people I find out actually listen to me and they, you're not watching which is great because if you hear my words my words are more powerful than just the video alone you don't need to watch me in order to hear what I have to say. And you think about yourself, whether you're in your kitchen now, or you're just listening and driving. Think about yourself leaving your, you know, you're, you're a captain of a ship and you're going to from Europe to America. All right. There's no GPS. There's no sonar radar. You just have a sense of a heading. Right. And. Because you're just using a basic map, because you're using the stars and quasars and solar system, a lot of times people get lost at sea because again, their destination is too far. The, the end goal is too far and they don't have any reference points. So England to America, that's a long sail, right? We got Christopher Columbus. He thought he was going to India and he ended up being in what we now know is probably Dominican Republic, right? And again, it was too far of a journey. He was reaching too far of a place to try to go. And he had no short-term markers to know if he was heading in the right direction. Now, maybe, maybe, just maybe, if he knew of other places along the way in his route that would verify he was going to India, if he saw maybe a, an island that was known a smaller island, he would be able to identify landmarks that would show him, hey, yep, when you get to this island here that looks like a, you know, a, a, a large diamond, you're on the right path. He would be able to adjust his heading. And those landmarks that I talk about are your mid and short term success points. Your mid and short term success points let you know that your heading is correct. Now, is that to say that you don't need to make adjustments for when a plan does and doesn't work? Lady, go. What, she's sitting here standing around. Yeah, come on, man. Does that mean that your plan does not need to sometimes be refined or even altered? Because your success points are now taking you to a different heading that still puts you at maybe beyond your initial goal, your initial outcome that you wanted for yourself. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing to be adaptable, but my message and mission is that again, you gotta make sure that you're headed, your mission is clear. It shouldn't take you 30, 40 minutes, and I love when I talk to people and I meet new people all the time. And I ask them about their goals in life, what their des designation is, and they really can't explain it. It sounds more theory than practice. You ever notice that? A lot of people have theoretical dreams and accomplishments. You know, it's like the theory of rel relativity. Relativity. You know, Einstein came up with the theory of relativity, but people actually found it to be true once he was gone. <laughs> You know, now we know it as gospel once he's dead and gone. So your theoretical dreams and aspirations, you, that'll be around. We might find that to be truth, but you may not make it to those dreams. You may not accomplish those aspirations because they're too based in theory. And if I get this and I get that and, you know, if the universe opens up and if Saturn comes closer to Jupiter and if, uh, you know, my wife made three more years, if the if and 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 when you get too many ifs, I think you need to let it go and get something that you can do, you will do, something a little bit more defined. And the reason why people use a whole lot of ifs, you know, if, if the reason why people use a lot of ifs it's because it doesn't it doesn't really hold them to accomplishing that goal. And that's a fact. When you teach your children, teach them to not make ifs, teach them to make cans, wills, do's. 
when I do this, this will happen, that will occur. When I'm done with this, I'm going to accomplish that. When I have achieved this goal, the next goal is that. See, these sound like things that you're on the path to do and I would believe you. But when I start hearing someone give me vague terms and vague explanations, and believe me, we're, we have these people in our family, we have these people in our household, we have these people at our work, our job, and we, we hear it every day. And what you gotta do is insulate yourself like I talked about in other videos, make sure you insulate yourself from adopting that philosophy, that theoretical accomplishments and achievements that will never happen. This is the same as investing and trying to time the market. These are people who are making no actionable steps. They're moving towards walking backwards. <laughs> Notice I said that's an oxymoron, right? They're moving towards walking backwards. They're not moving towards something. And the reason why you could definitely tell is that you don't sense that determination, right? You ever see somebody walking and when they walk, they look like they're headed somewhere and they mean it, right? They mean business. And you don't know where they're going, but you get a sense that by the way they walk, you know they're, they're going someplace. Whenever you want to get over, buddy, I'm, you got enough room. You got practically a football field. So I'm going to land my plane there, folks. And this is why I'm talking about you need to have determination. You need to fuel your fire. Because desire is something that wanes if it does not continuously get full fuel. Right? It does not, it wanes if it does not have fuel. You need fuel for your desires. And one must stay determined with their heading. You have to stay on your, your central mission. And not make side missions your main mission. Be a flexible being able to adjust your plan if need be and create short and midterm goals that you can accomplish things for it with that will lead you and push you baby steps towards your main goal, your long-term outcomes. Folks, don't forget to get my book, Getting Dollars from Dirt, A Beginner's Guide to Vacant Land Investing on Amazon. The link is in the description section below. Also, there is a link to my properties. Uh, ancestry lands again dot com is where you go to find property folks remember ancestry lands does three great things we don't do interest we don't do credit checks and we allow you to finance the property for the same amount the cost today it won't change and the value of that 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 dollar that you're spending now will not change in the years to come you can also buy the property for cash and get the deed and you're done we created over 50 new landowners and we're not done yet. Remember folks, own property or be owned as property. That's all for today. Philip Davis, please like and share and comment in the description section below. And don't forget my book, all right? Take care folks, be out. Are you confused with today's real estate market? With high interest rates and overpriced housing, it can be hard to find something to own at the right price. Available on Amazon, Getting Dollars from Dirt by author Philip H. Davis is a game-changing book that invites you to embark on a thrilling exploration of this often overlooked asset class. This book is your roadmap to unlocking the secrets of vacant land investment. Inside these pages, you will uncover the transformative power of vacant land as a wealth-building tool. Discover how to spot promising properties, assess their true value, and capitalize on market trends. From understanding zoning and permits to leveraging financing strategies, you will gain the knowledge and confidence to make savvy investment decisions. With each page you turn, you will gain a deeper understanding of the profound impact your investments can have on the world around you. Getting dollars from dirt is not just a guidebook, it's a call to action. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a curious novice, this book will empower you to tap into the immense potential of vacant land and embark on a journey toward financial freedom and a brighter future.